for being here. So uh, my name is Monica Hernandez. I am the Development and Social Impact Officer for Casa Familiar. And I'm here with a lot of artists from across San Diego, Tijuana, uh, that collaborated us with, um, with some murals along our cultural corridor. So we'll get into that in a bit. But before we um, get into that, I want to introduce our co-facilitator. Hi, so I am currently an assistant to the Front Arte Cultura. I also work for El Salon as a house assistant. Uh, I've been working with Casa Familiar for about five, six years. Um, and uh, I, I myself am an artist as well. Yeah. Thank you. So um, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, we'll start over here on this side with, and then we'll pass it along for everybody to introduce themselves and whatever it is they want to share with us about uh, who they are, their journey as an artist. And then we'll get a little bit more into the conversation. Hi, my name is uh, Betty Bangs. Um, I am a Chicana artist. I have helped at Chicano Park with a few murals. I paint a lot of body positive art, mostly women and uh, shapes that are more relatable to us. And um, I'm lucky to be able to have painted in uh, this corridor also with a mural that I feel represents the community and um, the environment. Hello, my name is Yvette Roman. I'm a local Fronteriza artist. I am a curator. I run a gallery at A Reason to Survive in National City, and I also teach art um, there. Um. ¿Qué tal? Buenas tardes. Uh, mi nombre es Israel Elizondo. Soy de Tijuana. Y este, empecé haciendo graffiti ya hace muchos años por medio de, del movimiento de hip hop que este, entró a Tijuana hace muchos años. Empecé a bailar break primero, como a los nueve. 10, por ahí del 83, 84, y posteriormente empecé a pintar, y primero era la idea de, de crear o de vandalizar y este, pelear contra un sistema que, que cuando tienes 12, 13 años no sabes realmente de qué se trata, pero ya cuando vas creciendo, vas leyendo, vas educándote un poco, eh, tu trabajo va cambiando y va tomando otra forma, entonces el empuje es distinto, ¿no? Entonces, uh, me da muchísimo gusto estar y ser partícipe de, de este grupo y de los murales que se hicieron aquí con Casa Familiar. Y este, muchísimas gracias por la invitación. Hi, my name is Gerardo Mesa. I'm also an artista fronterizo de aquí de Tijuana, local de San Isidro. Eh, tengo una trayectoria de más de 20 años pintando. Me considero un artista multifacético. No me gusta etiquetarme con una... Con, con algún movimiento o, este, o alguna temática, me encanta pintar, es por eso que soy un artista y es un honor estar aquí con ustedes y ser parte de lo que hizo The Front para la comunidad aquí de San Isidro. Gracias. Good afternoon, buenas tardes, este, me llamo Víctor Ochoa, um, también me considero fenómeno fronterizo, tengo casa en Tijuana y en San Diego y he estado pintando por todos lados del condado y de otras partes del mundo. Pero aquí en San Isidro siempre se me ha hecho algo muy importante como la frontera más transitada del mundo y que ni me acuerdo qué tantos proyectos he hecho aquí. Me acuerdo de uno que hicimos en los 70s en toda la parte de enfrente de este mismo edificio. And uh, I love being here and, and I'm Thank you for inviting me to still throw some brochazos out there. Gracias. Thank you. So uh, I'm super excited uh, just to have this grouping of people because um, I grew up here in San Isidro, and I feel like you all represent such a diverse grouping and all these different things, like, you know, with Victor, 
I, I see you and you're like an icon and like you said, a phenomenon of like Chicano muralism and history and, and that part of, of layers that, that are all part of our identity, the transfronterizo part este, with, you know, Gerardo, like just, I think that really uh, represents people who just love to paint for the art of painting, right? For, for the hell of it, like that's what moves you. And um, with Chente, I really relate to that because his, his journey was very similar to mine, like what, how I got drawn into art was through graffiti, was through hip hop, and that, you know, was a big part of my own political um, development and my social development, uh, my political consciousness. So one of the things that was really important for us to do as, as we're developing San Isidro in the cultural corridor is really bringing all of these different elements of who we are as a community into that space to elevate it, to beautify it, and because it is uh, the cultural corridor, for those of you who don't know, it's on Cypress Drive. It's one of San Isidro's most uh, walked through pedestrian pathways. And that's why there's a lot of visibility and it's a really great opportunity for all of us to come together and work on this. So um, what I'm gonna ask each one of you is to maybe talk a little bit about your particular piece that you worked on and also, um, I know some artists do a little bit more than others, but how you engage the youth or community in your piece and why that matters, why is that important? So um, should we start this time over on that side? Well, you know, my, my piece is, um, I don't think it's anything unusual, but what I saw was a fence originally and I kind of thought, well, I'm kind of getting a little bit older to be doing just a, a regular fence. So I was talking to Gerardo and some other uh, people. I said, well, let's let's make it a little bit more durable and a little bit more, uh, not kind of more professional, but there was a little corner that intrigued me. And to me, corners are, in mural painting, are one of the most powerful points and if you know how to use a corner you can really it's it's almost like the mural can transcend to three-dimensional so that was w the first thing that I liked about that little corner it's like a little that you could see it from both Hall and Cypress at the same time and then when you c turn around you you know it really it, it there's a power about it and and uh, I uh, I thought about um, what would last and what would be um, here appreciated in, in the community in the corridor. And uh, the other part that, that's important to my mural is that I'm using nothing but uh, Nova Color uh, pearlescent paints. I've been using those for like 40 years and they, they actually glow and uh, I've already tested them with low riders where if you hop in front of the paint, it, it kind of sparkles and it kind of vibrates even at nighttime. So I, I re I'm really having a great time uh, doing that. I think the other artists that, we've been recruiting artists and we haven't had that many kids, but I love working with kids and I usually, if uh, it was kind of like we're in the last part of the projects, uh, so, recruitment and stuff like that was a little bit uh, harder for me but I'm I'm open I usually get the kids to do the primers and the base coats and stuff like that but now we we have some graffiti artists uh, we, uh, Gerardo's been working on it we had some non-artists also helping uh, we also have the son of Joaquin Chinias one of the very very important Chicano Mexicano artists in history that did La Familia uh, uh, for Cesar Chavez, and he's from Tijuana. So it's been, a, it's been really, a, a, I'm looking forward to the dedication. We're already talking about a carne asada and stuff like that. So I'm ready to, I guess I'm hungry. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Well, I painted my, my piece of Alebrijes. I wanted to paint Alebrijes because they represent our culture. I love the colors of the um, Alebrijes. Me encanta la transición y las costumbres que tenemos de Día de Muertos y la relación que tenemos como mexicanos con la muerte. Los Alebrijes, I think they're part of that. 
Alebrijes help you in the transition to the other world. I love the colors. I love the detail of the Alebrijes. I had some kids helping, and that was great, having the community engage in the mural that you're doing, having the community paint with you and make them part of the mural. Me, también tuve el honor de ayudar a trabajar con todos los artistas que están aquí presentes, and that really meant a lot to me, working with them, see how they do their murals, learning from them, from each one of them, is very important as an artist. So, thank you guys. Gracias. Uh, remembering right now, when I was called to look at the wall that we we're gonna paint, or I was gonna paint, um, of course, the mural stays here. The mural is for the people, for the community. So you work with the community and you bring in the kids uh not only to help but to really feel that they are a part of it and that's their mural you know because in the at the end of the day it doesn't matter um if they make mistakes you know you're the professional so then you're supposed to help them out to to learn how to do it because at some point you want them to uh get something out of it you know so then um it's a great community i've, I've been through here like a, a bunch of times even though i live in tijuana and uh, that wall that I was given, uh, it's a great, great spot right uh, next to the trolley uh, Bayer station. And so it's seen by a lot of people every day. So I wanted, I wanted it to be really colorful. And uh, right now, I don't remember if I did a couple of hearts or if I did one heart on one end. And kind of off of that heart, it's beating the rest of nature, right? And it has a couple of uh, hummingbirds, I believe and uh different plants native and other ones not native but um i like that the kids were uh kind of a more of in a rush because they helped out and they they finished really quick and they wanted more you know um so then the wall became a little bit smaller you know from afar you see it and you think it's really big but then once you see them working and they work so quick that i was like wow so what are they going to do now you know so maybe next time a uh, bigger wall, right? Bigger <laughs> wall, bigger wall. So, uh, but yeah, it was fantastic. It's it's great to, uh, you know, to to uh, work with kids. Uh, I work with kids on both sides of the fence, and it's great because uh, thanks to living in Tijuana and being a Tijuana kid, uh, through graph, through break dancing, and through the connection and having family on this side as well, um, then that gave me. Uh, uh, voice and I'm part of a group that's called Hecho de Mexico, which is basically the first uh, graffiti crew in, in Mexico. And um, thanks to that, it gave a, a bunch of kids on the other side of the border, uh, you know, like a, a vote in a movement that probably wasn't our movement, which is, you know, more based New York, Philadelphia, things like this, but places like this. But uh, but we showed them we're still here. We're still painting, and uh, thankfully, and uh, yeah, I, I love the project, and it was great. And uh, thank you again for the invitation to help you beautify your your uh, the space for the for the kids and for the families. Um, I think anytime I paint or work in San Isidro, like it holds a special place for me because I grew up in this area. Um, my family grew up in this area, and we were more towards the Coral Gate, um, Las Americas, and then over here by the high school but it, it just it feels nice to be here um working in the corridor specifically like just having all the people walk by and c conversate with you and talk about your the piece that was pretty incredible um i'm gonna talk a little about the mural but there's a cute little story that i want to share with you guys too um so my mural is monochromatic it's blue and it's inspired by just stuff that i see um specifically like when you go to the mercado and you buy masks the mexican masks the luchadores mask um a lot of the youth I work with, um, it's very playful. Um, and then there's also an element of, there's an element of, um, what is it called? Titeres, okay, titeres, yeah. So I've been, I've been painting titeres for a while now and it kind of started, um, so my grandfather was like a collector of random things. And um, when he passed away, we were cleaning his house and you were, like he had boxes boxes of just random stuff, keys, bulbs, pictures, random stuff, inquilinos left behind. And then in one box, there was a bunch of titeres. 
So that kind of started me thinking about tigres a little bit more and kind of painting them. And I painted them a few times. Um, so the mural is monochromatic, titres, and they all have different faces on them. Um, and then the clothing is patterns and repetition. And when I was painting, um, two young teens came up to me and they're like, hey, could we help you paint? And then I'm like, sure, what do you guys want to do? And he's like, oh, we just want to paint a heart. And I said, well, if you're going to paint a heart, you need to like actually paint many of them so it makes sense, right? So they sat there for like an hour and a half painting hearts on one of the clothing. And it's actually my favorite part of the piece because it's like so organic the way it grew and so organic, um, a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. Um, okay, thank you for inviting me, Monica. Um, that wall was a challenge for me um, to say. Uh, I was really lucky that I had quite a few help from the youth from Casa. And some of my friends brought their children also that live and grew up in this area, which was uh, really awesome to have them be part of it. Um, my piece uh, has a lot of, it was supposed to have environmental awareness, um, staying true to my art, bigger is more beautiful. So um, I drew the images of the people bigger. There are some images of kids that are not, you know, your average size, which I think should be represented always. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm really grateful to have been part of this project with these awesome artists. Thank you, Mesa, for helping also. He was part of mine, so he threw in some stuff there that really helped it come, come all together. And again, thank you, Monica, Casa, and everybody for including me in this awesome project. Working on this, these pieces, because they're all very beautiful, I was able to walk down and, you know, see all the different, uh, the themes and all the different messages. While working in San Isidro, did you feel so, some sort of inspiration to the environment or not, now that you've been around it, did you like have a, some sort of preparation or something that you were expecting while you were working on that space? I, I wanted to say, that, you know, just to add a little negativity too, because we're all like, all everything's positive. But I remember this guy in the truck came by. He says, "Oh, ustedes están mal ahí, están estorbando," because he had a big old truck, and he's like, "So I mo I did some moving around, and then I actually brought some cones and stuff, and then he came back again, and he says, "Oh, that he was like a whole different person," and and so he said almost kind of dispensando said that he was so rough on us because, you know, we're doing something not for me, it's for the community. And, you know, uh, the other part that I think is important about my mural is that I'm trying to, to say something positive about the youth. So I have a, a really cute uh, resident in there that, that I think uh, really says something about the future. I has a lot of uh, pre-Columbian, uh, designs in it which it, it's part of our heritage and I want to make sure that people are proud of who they are that even though we're in San Isidro a lot of times people say oh I'm on this side of the border so I'm not really Mexican. I was just going to say that being so close to the border is like a very unique experience and as an artist or human who's crossed that border I don't even know how many times in my lifetime since I was a child like, I don't think I could get away from that in my art. Everything I do, even though it's not necessarily initially political, like, does become that because that's who I am as a human. Somebody who has lived that experience and that wants to share that with the world. So everything I see and am comes out through my art. What I like about painting in San Isidro is the um, engagement with the community. Yesterday I was listening to music Kids were walking from school and they were dancing with the music, so that was pretty cool. And also the people were asking who brought us here, and we said Casa Familiar. A lady asked for directions for Casa Familiar, as, and it was like, as if she knew that we were with Casa Familiar, and that I think that's a great impact, what you're doing here for the community, and bringing artists to share with your community, I think, with our community, 
is great. But I like how they engage. I like the kids dancing, people just like watching us and asking what are we painting. I think that's that's great. Yeah, like when the kids are walking towards and um, a, a kid came and asked me, he's like, hey, do you get paid to do this? Like, is this your job? And I'm like, yeah, this is my job. And he was so impressed by the fact that you can make money through art. And I think that's important because being able to be an artist and then have the youth know that they could be whatever they want, that there's no limitations on what they could grow up to is very important. And having people painting and doing stuff that is beautiful in front of them, I think is an inspiration and not just to, for them to become artists, but for them to become whatever they're dreaming of. And I think that's part of the dancing and the walking by and the seeing and asking questions and be able, being able to engage. I think it's important. Uh, before we were talking, uh, before we came over here, we were talking about um, the differences uh, from about living in Tijuana and, San, and in San Diego, no, and all these things about being uh, responsible about what you do and, and things like this, you know. So then, um, I know that there's a lot of kids in Tijuana that also have dreams, you know, and they don't have to hop the fence or anybody else, you know. I'm not saying it's bad if you if you do it or if that's your method, whatever. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of things to do in Mexico to make your own country better. And uh, I think uh, I used to be a student here at Castle Park and then at Southwestern College. I'm not a resident. I was paying a lot of money back then. So uh, I was studying photojournalism and uh, my idea was to become a cinematographer because uh, to go to UCLA and study it because that's where Francis Ford Coppola went and uh, Jim Morrison studied there. So then and many, many other people. Right. So then um, Carlos Castaneda, you know, so then uh, the point of this is basically that uh, once I went back to Tijuana, I still felt at home and I and I. Uh, appreciated that San Diego like treated me super well and then back home I know that there's a lot of work to do still you know a lot of things to do uh, in the communities um, and I feel very responsible you know for uh, for making art better in Tijuana even though it you know other kids may not see it that way but but I see it that way you know I see it like uh, like it's in my hands to make this better and to make it grow in a in a good positive way you know so I'm, I'm thinking about sculptures and doing my stuff uh, I'm doing this new stuff that's called grafitectura and uh, some of the parts look like rods like uh, metal rods and these are like uh, metal rods of uh, of hope you know because a lot of houses in Tijuana uh, if you can see them in, on the hills they have like when they get them maybe the first time when they come either from the south of Mexico or, or you know and uh, they get to to Tijuas, then they have this first part and design of the house maybe from the 50s or 60s and then once an uncle or somebody crosses over to the states gets a little bit of money together and then they go back and then they do whatever year maybe 10 years pass by and they leave those rods just to like symbolize like okay I'll do something better in 10 years you know or in five years or whoever gets the money or whoever gets to stay keep the house does something on top of that so Tijuana doesn't have uh, an actual architecture or architectural design like other parts of Mexico because it's Tijuana is very very young so um, that's what I'm trying to do right now with uh, grafitectura and you know, combining those two things graffiti y arquitectura how do you feel about that impact for the youth that are witnessing this now that you've seen them they're present they're reacting um i know that with the front historically when it first became its origins uh there was a, a bit of a reception asking why why is there art here if we need housing you know i felt I, when i heard that when we had our uh, panel discussion for the 15th year anniversary it left me an impact because it's it's true right there is a lot of different uh portions you know housing that's really important for a community but why is art important why is it significant and how do you feel that that impact is left with the youth that gets to witness this and and just to add to that because that's actually i was going to my question was just right along those lines too um why does public art also matter like why why is you know art that's outside of the museums uh matter so whoever wants to speak to i'd like to say something to me and i'm one of the veteranos here and I've been painting public art for uh, you know at least 50 years 
uh, Chicano Park. I'm one of the co-founders of Chicano Park in 1970. And um, now the transformation that the public art has done to that community and still instills to a lot of the younger generations is still is still sending messages and I and I I've been feeling all these generations, you know, I can feel, you know, here comes another generation and they they, they get some uh, information. But how art in our community, especially Mexicans, we we respect art and we we feed from the art and we we get our messages and now that I'm getting older I think I'm getting more spiritual and I see as you know things uh, happen people are passing away uh, a new generation uh, I did the Anastasio mural which is the murdering of, of Anastasio Hernandez Rojas here in mm -hmm. San Isidro and uh, by 15 migras and uh, as a kid, and your, the question was, how do a, a kid perceive it? How does the general community perceive it? I think they see beauty in the art, they see messages in the art, and it also makes them, I think it touches the spiritual uh, personas of, of the people that are, are, are experiencing it. Yeah, I think, um, <laughs> When you, when you use the word public art, I think there's so much that encompasses that because it could be government-funded public art, it could be community public art. And I think that when you are, when you're creating artwork, the closer it becomes to the source, the more powerful it becomes because that's the people who know the community, that's the people who know what they're painting for. And I think that sometimes it's forgotten because like, oh, let's bring this artist from up north or from New York or from LA and they, might have some, but they don't know the community. So I think that it's important for artists who are working to do the research. If you're not from, just do your research, ask questions, ask your neighbors, because what you want might not be what the community wants. And I think that's always important. Like you said, um, I've actually heard that story um, told that people, our communities need a lot of stuff. They need housing, they need food, they need healthcare. There's so much that if you come with like, look at me with my art stuff, like, no, like you need to address everything and you need to ask questions because art is not the solution alone. There needs to be reform in other areas too, which art could support. And then art is also like the voice and the stories and it just, everything needs to work together for it to work. Well, um, <clears throat> I just want to say thank you so much to you guys to for just <clears throat> incorporating this beautiful artwork into San Isidro. I, I know San Isidro has always had beautiful artwork, but now I feel like with this, with the cultural corridor, it's, it's much more excelled, much more into a focus of education, of history, culture, and just enabling everyone to accept where we're from and where, where we live. It's something beautiful. And as much as the maestro being here, you guys are incorporating this. It's, it's just, it, it feels like a privilege. Um, I live in San Isidro. I've lived in San Isidro all my life. My family lives in San Isidro. It goes back to the 60s, 70s. And so getting to see this just, it feels, it feels like a, a progress. It feels like a growth. So I'm just appreciative. Yeah, thank you.